I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. Beginning with the stock market mood. And right now, there's a lot of fear in the market. As you can see, we've got war in the Middle East, war in Europe, political gridlock in Washington, D.C., stubbornly high inflation, runaway government debt, and runaway government spending, which is fueling that debt. We've got rapidly rising interest rates. There's a lot of anxiety right now among investors and uh, clearly this is illustrating that. I asked you, what is your biggest fear? This was on the community tab on ETF Guide TV. And uh, looks like running out of money in retirement, that along with a large unknown external financial crisis, are the biggest two concerns, according to this poll. And I concur with our audience. You know, if your investments are a source of anxiety, then you clearly need a bigger margin of safety cushion. I've been talking about that a lot on this channel. Margin of safety and having a cushion, so important, especially as you get into or approach retirement. What you need is a bigger safety cushion compared to your working years. And the reason is because that combination of potential market losses and retirement account withdrawals, when you put those two together, it actually accelerates your spend down and could cause you to deplete your financial resources. Now, that's no position anybody should be in or should face, but it is entirely preventable. And the easiest way to do that is by investing with a margin of safety, having a cushion. And uh, this is the framework that I teach on this channel. This is the framework that I teach in ETF Guides online courses, along with my books, more on this in a second. Let's continue with our conversation about what's going on in financial markets. wanted to take a chart uh, for you that highlighted leveraged ETFs from a different angle than we've talked about over the past couple of weeks. If you've been watching this channel, you know I've highlighted some of those single stock bullish ETFs that use leverage, and they've been great performers in their short ex existence. But in this chart, what we're illustrating here is ticker symbol TMV, which is a bearish ETF that uses leverage. And this is a three-year performance chart showing TMV. That's the Direction Daily 20-plus Year Treasury Bear 3X shares. Boy, is that a mouthful. And what it does is it aims for triple daily opposite performance to long-term U.S. Treasuries. And as you can see here, it's gained almost 300% over the past three years it's been a great trade. And you can see at the very bottom, TLT, with a very puke-worthy performance there. Uh, barf bag not included here. But TLT has been a horrible performer. And it's curious to me that TLT has lost almost half its value. Yet still so many investors, so many out there, I see this even among professionals, financial industry professionals that have the misinformed view that treasuries are a safe haven investment. Since when does a safe haven investment lose almost 50% of its value? Can the know-it-alls watching me or watching this educate me on that? Uh, if you're still using treasuries for safety inside your investment portfolio, you are doing it wrong and you better fix it before it's too late. This is your warning sign. And my suggestion is to use the margin of safety tool at ETFguide.com that I built. It'll help you to get your mind right and your money right, not just to have the correct amount allocated for your margin of safety bucket, but also to be using the correct types of investments, investments that meet the minimum standard of safety. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. We've got five sectors up, six are down. It's almost a split decision here. And, you know, it's been mostly concentrated performance winners. Those three at the very top, XLC, XLK, and XLY, have led all year. And it's interesting to me that you see some of these defensive industry groups like real estate as well as consumer staples and utilities underperforming. So um, really a tale of two cities. You got the offensive sectors winning the defensive sectors losing right now. In terms of um, taking a look at the 
fast 5.8 years. That's what this is illustrating, this particular table. This was sent to us by our friend, my friend, Dave Krensis, over at ETF Portfolio Management. He put this together. And this shows, it's very interesting to look at these numbers. And this, again, as, as I said, shows the past 5.8 years uh, because he wanted to include FNGU. That's, I, I guess, its start po starting point. And what you'll notice highlighted here is that 50-50 split between SPY, S&P 500, and TLT, which we highlighted previously, that 50-50 that split has delivered a 3% annualized return, while just S&P 500 straight compounded at 10%. That's a pretty big difference in favor of all equity pro portfolio. Not saying that's what you should necessarily have, but it's just interesting to look at these numbers. Also... He likes to highlight it, and I, I think it's a valid point. If you take a look at the leveraged index performance of TQQQQ as well as Tackle, TECL, and then you also have uh, the S&P 500 in there. Actually, he didn't do SPXL. But the point here is if we look at just the leveraged uh, ETFs here, you'll notice that they delivered about four times that of the unlevered S&P 500. Pretty impressive performance in favor of those leveraged ETFs. I don't know how this chart made it into our discussion, but I'm going to include it anyway. This is the look at Tesla models. You got the three, the S, the Y, and the X. And look at that. Over the past year, on average, they've lost over 34% of their value and this is for the Car Gurus Index, there was a time not long ago when used car prices, I think, were going up. Well, not lately. And uh, this shows you just one example of what's going on with Tesla's prices. They've been lowering the prices, too, by the way, on the, the new models. Um, and, of course, there's a lot of factors and reasons for that, include, including increasing competition in the EV market as well as financing costs. Let's take a look at financing cost. This is a on an X feed. I don't know how you say this guy's name. Well, let's just say his first name is Holger. Not sure how you say the last part of it, but look at this chart showing the scary math behind the world's so-called safe asset, safest asset, which is treasuries. And look at this seeds of crisis that Wall Street, no one else can any longer ignore. You got almost 75% of U.S. Treasuries must be rolled over and refinanced in the next five years. The problem is interest rates have skyrocketed since, since then. And you, you add, if you just add one percentage point to the average interest rate in the CBO's forecast, and you keep all the other numbers unchanged, you're going to look at, according to uh, Holger's calculations, an additional $3.5 trillion in federal debt by 2033. That's just additional debt from interest costs alone. And uh, here's the problem. The government's annual interest bill at that point alone is going to be around $2 trillion. For context, individual income taxes are set to bring in around $2.5 trillion this year. These are massive financial imbalances Stop calling U.S. Treasuries safe haven investments. They're not. And look at Bridgewater's Ray Dalio. He was in my book, Habits of the Investing Greats, one of the greatest investors of our era and of all time, uh, multi-billionaire, warning of an impending debt crisis coming in the U.S., and it's hard to disagree with him. When you see everything lining up, the political gridlock in D.C., intraday or intra-party fighting where they can't even agree in the same party on anything, let alone across the aisle, this is a recipe for disaster. They continue spending money on this, spending money on that, runaway spending on uh, 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 Medicare as well as Social Security. Uh, those are the two big items, by the way, that uh, you need to know that are sinking the U.S. fiscal ship. And so, again, I want all of you to be ready for what's to come. 
That's why I teach you the proper framework for building and managing an investment portfolio. There's three cornerstones. You begin with a safety first approach. That's your margin of safety money. You've got capital preservation, zero volatility, and liquidity. That's what the margin of safety bucket provides you. And your investments in that bucket should have all three of those attributes. Not one of three, not two of three, but all three. And then you've got your core portfolio and non-core portfolio. And you can see the attributes listed there. This is actually from my latest book called Portfolio Architecture. I've got a link in the description section below. You can get a copy. For those of you that don't like to read, it also comes as an audiobook. So you can listen on your morning commute or in the car or on your morning walk with the dog. What if you invest without a margin of safety? Then what? Well, that leaves you with two buckets. That's your core portfolio and non-core. And the problem with that is that you're over-allocated to at-risk investments. When you have a core and a non-core, remember, those two buckets invest in assets that can and might lose value. Maybe those losses are temporary, but nevertheless, your margin of safety is your anchor. And what you're doing is you're compartmentalizing your losses when you invest with a margin of safety because now you're limiting your potential losses to just those two bu buckets, the core and the non-core. Well, when you don't invest with a margin of safety, you have zero protection. And that's no situation that any investor should be in. So to fix that, go to ETFguide.com, use my margin of safety tool that I built. It's going to give you the exact calculation of your target portfolio size for safety, then it's going to also help you implement that margin of safety with the right investments that meet minimum standards of safety, and then, of course, monitor your portfolio and the safety levels. And the idea here is to have anxiety-free investing so that you can reach your goals and sleep at night. And, of course, at ETFguide.com, when you go there, you can also join as a free member. I've got lots of good benefits for becoming a free member, including uh, training, guidance with uh, webinars, as well as uh, online classes, and lots and lots of other good stuff. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a link to my new book called Portfolio Architecture, a handbook for investors. So I want you all to get a copy of that. And uh, that does it for today's episode. Hit the comment section below. Let me know how you've enjoyed the program. I've got another upcoming episode for you planned all about being aware and not being fooled by these labels of, of false labels of safety, safe haven investing. So stay tuned for that. I'm Ron DeLegge. We'll see you next time.